Hello, Orbs community. Uh, Tal here. Um, so today we're going to talk about DeFi. Uh, continue our talk about DeFi. We already had a few of them. Um, we've been getting a lot of questions uh, about what we're building in DeFi. Uh, we're going to get to those, uh, maybe not in this uh, talk, but later on. If you're really, really curious uh, what I recommend you do, uh, even if you want to see what we're work working on before we announce it, you can always go to the Orbs uh, GitHub um, organization and you're going to see here several things that we're working on. Many of them are not announced yet, but this is how you can satisfy your curiosity. Anyways, so the topic for today's talk um, is the appeal that DeFi has uh, over CeFi. We've been talking to a lot of CeFi players, uh, and, and the question is, is DeFi showing considerable appeal to them or not? And, and the answer we think is yes. And, and I want to show you some numbers to convince you uh, of this fact. So let's talk. Uh, start talking about retail. Um, what is retail? Retail is, for example, you at home, uh, and you want to take a loan or you have extra money. Uh, so you go to a financial provider, for example, your bank. Um, this is what you do in DeFi. And one of the amusing things uh, in CeFi, I mean, this. so one of the amusing things is that banks and many financial institutions are middlemen and their existence creates a very big, I mean, barrier of, of the numbers that you get and the numbers that they can provide. And I want, I want to show you some numbers. So let's assume that you are banking and this is just a bank that is close to me, Barclays, for example, and I just went and I searched over for overdrafts in CFI. So let's say that I don't have enough money in my bank account and I want Barclays to give me a short-term loan. Um, so let's go over the website and we, let's see the number that we get. What would it cost? The annual rate that I get from a bank uh, for uh, getting some money, if I don't have enough, if I want to take a loan, is 35%. And this is a lot. Okay, this is a lot, a lot. <laughs> now what rate would I get if I give the bank money? If, if we do the other way around. And if you go around that, so I just searched for Barclays, the exact same bank for savings account, meaning that I have an excess of money and I want to give this access to the bank. So what is the savings rate that the bank gives me? <laughs> and you can see that the numbers are ridiculous. Okay, I'm getting <laughs> less than a percent. So how come the bank, the bank offers me less than 1% for the money that I gave the bank and takes from me a lot, 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 lot more. Why are these numbers closer? And the numbers are pretty far because there is a huge monopoly in the CFI uh, financial system. And this is one of the great things about DeFi. DeFi takes out these middlemen. If maybe I can give you a loan, you can give me a loan, then we can offer each other better rates. So this is kind of like peer-to-peer -peer lending. So DeFi kind of enables that. So we don't need somebody like a bank to facilitate our financial transactions uh, together. Um, and basically, we can get closer to the true value of money. Um, so this is something very cool and not very trivial to get in the real world. Um, so let's change perspective and not think about retail uh, you know, people anymore and, and think about maybe enterprises, about uh, corporations. And as you know, many corporations in the real world, they have extra money. They have cash reserves. Uh, for example, uh, Apple. Apple, I think, finished the last quarter was over $190 billion in cash reserves. Uh, so what do these companies do with all this money? Uh, so there's a big problem holding US dollars today, and this is inflation. Uh, so if you can't just hold it in a bank because it's gonna lose value slowly. Um, because, you know, Federal Reserve prints more dollars. Um, so what do these companies need to do? They need to somehow, you know, try to generate returns and fight inflation. Uh, and it's no secret, so all of this money is, is working. So you have financial institutions, whether it's hedge funds or financial managers, uh, that take this money uh, and try to, you know, generate yields with it, give it to people who want it and are willing to pay you for using it. Um, so let's say that you are a company and, and, and you have that and, and you're looking to see what kind of yields you can generate. So let's see some numbers. So I'm looking here uh, in the Fidelity website, okay? Uh, Fidelity, you can see some of the, you know, uh, 
uh, U.S. market um, bonds um, and treasuries and stuff like that, these are relatively low-risk uh, vehicles. Uh, they're kind of like taking loans. Uh, so here you're letting the government borrow money, and here you're letting corporations borrow money. So what is the average rates that you get, uh, interest rates, if you, if you give money to these uh, avenues? So you can see that the uh, U.S. treasuries <laughs> rates are very low also significantly lower than 1%. And even the corporate um, uh, bonds rates are very, very low. And even if you go to bonds that are very risky, you can see here BBB rating, for example, you see that you still get to around 1%. Um, so it, it's very hard to generate yields over dollars. And this turns people into much more riskier things. For example, go and invest in the stock market. Okay, stock market is, is very volatile. Uh, because you don't know how will you know Amazon behave tomorrow, um, so it's very hard to predict, and these are riskier places, but you can get higher returns. So, so it's very difficult in the CFI world to generate good returns for something that is not volatile, for example, for dollars. Um, so what does it look like in DeFi? So we said that in DeFi, you don't have these middlemen, so we can get closer to the true value of money. Um, so let's see some of the projects and, and what they offer for uh, stablecoin investments. Now here I want to differentiate between investing in things that are volatile, for example you invest in Bitcoin or you invest in, um, I don't know, you invest in Rope20. I don't even know what Rope20 is, but I, but Rope20 is not a stablecoin. Uh, so these are risky assets by nature. Uh, what I want to focus about is assets that are stable by nature. Um, so let's go in Harvest Finance. Harvest Finance is a very cool retail product called Vault, and it allows um, people basically to take uh, money, uh, assets, put it in a vault, and let the vault pretty much uh, put this money in a position and just see the yields uh, accrue. So if you go to the stable coins, you can see today that if you take USDC, okay, which is a stable asset, and you give it to Harvest Finance, the vault, you get APY that is about 30%. So it's quite far uh, from the APY that you get in the CFI world. There's a very big difference. Okay, so maybe it's, this is just something unique to Ethereum. So let's look at something in Binance Smart Chain. Binance Smart Chain has AutoFarm Network. AutoFarm Network um, is a very uh, similar Vault product. Uh, and this Vault product also has uh, stable coins you can work with. You don't have to work with Vaultal assets if you don't want to. Um, so the return, for example, for USDC here is around 26%, USDT is 30%, BUSD 30%. So you see the numbers, the numbers are pretty high. Um, and people often ask, are these numbers just hype? Um, is this just, you know, like the hype of DeFi today, the fact that, you know, the entire crypto market is on a bull run? Um, and my answer is, is maybe some of it a bit, is maybe like the true interest rates would be a little bit lower but they're not definitely not as low as in the CFI world, because in the CFI world, you do have all these middlemen. Okay, it's very difficult to get good deals in CFI. You have to be you know, part of a select club, a select few, and most people and most companies don't have access to these places. Uh, so the great things about DeFi is it kind of connects you know, assets to their true value and gives you I don't know, like the best deal that you can get uh, just because everything is fair play. Um, so this is what makes DeFi very, very appealing to CFI players. Uh, and this is a very interesting target audience that we've been speaking to and thinking about building protocols that serve better. Uh, so more about these protocols uh, in the next talk. Thank you.